You're listening to Big World Network. Phineas Fracture and the Terror of Dr. Malondi. Episode 3. Written by Joseph Gatch. Read by Michael Young. I still can't believe you booked us a stay at a madam's house. Abigail scorned as they ate their lunch in the small pub next to their new hotel. Just wait until Mrs. Popkiss finds out about this one. Tell her and you will be walking home said Phineas. I have enough to deal with right now without incurring her wrath. Abigail stiffened her arms. I soaked in the bath for an hour and I still smell like fish. Atlantis just made my list of places not to revisit. Phineas took a drink from his mug and immediately spit it out, much to Abigail and William's chagrin. What the? This is tea! What's the coffee that I ordered? He said loudly. Oh dear, here we go. The waitress, a plump elderly lady, waddled over to their table. Is there something wrong, dearie? Yes, there is something wrong. I specifically ordered coffee. This is tea. Is this all you serve in this accursed country? Everywhere it is tea. Tea! Tea! The waitress scowled and snatched the mug from his grasp. I'll fix it right up. As she entered the kitchen, William overheard her say, Burn some toast, Danny, and run some hot water through it. Well, there's another native that you've alienated, William said. He flipped through the paper that he was reading. Here's something interesting. Citizens of Thebes, Egypt, awoke to a mechanical plague crossing half the city. Buildings had been transformed into mechanical works of art. And citizens within the affected area have also been transformed into human mechanical hybrids. Many are calling it a curse. <laughs> interesting. Yes, interesting. But it has nothing to do with us. Phineas said, tapping his fork on this plate in anticipation of his coffee. William turned a few more pages. Now, this might be something. It's in the classified section. Attention, citizens. A demonstration of my power will be conducted at two in the morning. After that, you have three days to submit all control of this nation to me. Failure to do so will result in another demonstration. This paper is from three days ago, the day before Whitechapel disappeared. It's right there in black and white. So we have until the end of the day to find this guy before he wipes out another part of the city. Doesn't anyone read the papers in this country? I said Phineas, eagerly looking around for his coffee. They probably can't see it through the soot, said William, wiping the paper. It's not signed, but it is a start. Someone must know who placed the ad. Just what type of moron places an ad in the paper when he wants to take over a nation? Phineas snapped. Why not deliver the demands to the Queen, or Parliament, or whoever's in charge around here? Spread fear, I suppose. Get the public to do the work for you, answered William. Then why blow them up? They're no good for you if they don't exist. Besides, I just get angry at the one trying to kill us all. This country makes absolutely no sense to me. Your coffee, sir, the waitress said as she slammed the mug down on the table in front of Phineas, startling him. Thank you. Phineas said as he wiped some splashes from his coat. He took a sip, pursed his lips, and added sugar. How is it? asked William. Tastes like burnt toast. Strange. Yes. William got up from the table. I'm going to see if there are any current papers for sale. Maybe there's something new about this guy in them. Don't stray off too far. You could lost in the fog, Phineas said as William left. So, what are we going to do today? asked Abigail, eagerly after a few moments of silence. Today, we will go to the paper's office and see if anyone knows who placed that ad, replied Phineas. She rolled her eyes. Are you serious? We are in a foreign land, in one of the greatest cities, full of culture and history and art. 
And you want to go to a newspaper office? Abigail said, glaring across the table at him. Why, yes. How else am I going to get my money back? This is the best lead. Phineas was cut off by several screams from outside the pub. People ran by in panic, and one woman entered the door, panting. A monster! Rampaging through the streets! She yelled and then ran off. A monster? William went in that direction, didn't he? asked Phineas. William! Oh my! I've got to go! Phineas wiped his mouth, threw down his napkin, and bolted for the door, leaving Abigail all alone. The waitress, upon hearing the commotion, came over with a puzzled look. What's the meaning of all this, sweetie? she asked. Abigail looked up at her and opened her pocketbook. The meaning, ma'am, is that since I'm the only one left, you are lucky enough to get a tip for your troubles. Phineas ran down the street, finding pedestrians who were rushing in the opposite direction. Further along, he came across overturned vehicles, smashed signs and windows, total carnage. He feared the worst, that William had transformed once again. Through the smoke and haze, he caught sight of a figure twice the size of a normal man, hulking in stature. William! Phineas shouted. William Patterson! You are to calm down this instant! The figure stopped and slowly turned around. Do you hear me? You are to stop this nonsense this instant, or so help me. I will tesla you until you are a writhing puddle of jelly on these filthy London streets. In reality, Phineas was shaking in his boots, knowing full well that he had nothing to follow through with on his threats. Completely unarmed, he had no way of subduing his friend, and prayed that rationalizing with him would work this time. He had no desire to end up a smear on the pavement. William! Do you hear me? Phineas shouted again. Of course I can hear you. The whole city can hear you. Why the devil are you carrying on like this? What came William's voice from behind Phineas. Phineas slowly turned his head to see William standing up two feet away, holding a newspaper and a bag in one hand, and a pastry in the other. If you're here, then who is that? asked Phineas. William looked around Phineas. I don't know, but he's coming this way. Big fellow, isn't he? He said calmly. Phineas turned around and came face to face with the biggest man he had ever seen. The giant bent down and took a cigar from his mouth and blew a huge cloud of smoke into Phineas's face. Phineas held his breath for as long as he could and then coughed. You are saying something about tessling me? The giant said. Oh, um, I'm sorry. I thought you were someone else. <laughs> Easy mistake. Uh, pay it no mind. I <laughs> really don't know what to say, Mr. Um, Hyde, the giant said. And I think the word that you're looking for is run. Run? Mr. Hyde nodded. Run. Big World Network.